Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing some comparisons on aftermarket and OEM cylinders. We're going to take some timing numbers and see how close they make them, uh, the aftermarket ones to the OEM. We're gonna do readings with and without the base gasket. And we're also gonna take readings of the difference between first light versus a 50 thousandths feeler gauge, because some guys say that flow starts at first light. Some guys say that flow starts at 50 thousandths. So we're gonna see what kind of difference we have between first light and 50 thousandths. Stay tuned, lots to learn today. Here we have some disassembly and cleaning of the saw, getting it ready and preparing it to set up the timing wheel to start take our diagnostics and our different readings. Um, this saw was extra dirty, had to do a lot of cleaning on it to get it workable and in the position that I like to have them. All right, it's time to begin our investigative research on this Husqvarna 55. First thing we're gonna need to do is set up our timing wheel. This is the timing wheel on a drill chuck, put a half inch hole through the timing wheel, backer nut to be able to snug it up here. What I like to do first, Take something, push the piston to the bottom. Take your timing wheel. Get it close to bottom dead center because that's where the piston is now. Snug it up. Then when you take your piece here, don't go crazy tight. Don't hurt the threads. Just snug it up to where it won't move. All right, once that's done, take your piston stop. Insert into cylinder. These are great to have for removing flywheels, clutches, anything of that nature. Now, once the stop is in, you'll be able to check your wheel. Right there, get us lined up with the crank. Right there, we're at 35. and 55 so we'll split the difference reading about 41 and 43 let's pull it right there 42 and 42. All right, so wheel is correct. Next step, get it here to where you guys can see. Going to check first light. So what I'll do is set the saw up, I'm going to Remove the piston stop. Going to set the timing wheel. Let's move this. Set your timing wheel to top dead center. All right, now we're on the left side of the saw, so we're gonna go counterclockwise. If we were on the right side, we would go clockwise. But this is after top dead center. We're gonna find out where this exhaust opens. We're gonna test and see what the first light is right now. Now, if, I, if you don't know what I'm doing right here, I could probably make some other videos and explain it, but I imagine if you're watching this, you probably understand what porting is already. Maybe not how to do it, but what it is for sure. Now, I'm turning right now, and you watch. 
See the light? There's the light. Some guys say, oh, I, I want it like this wide. I don't know. When I hear first light, I hear first indication of light. So that's first indication of light. And our timing wheel right now is at 104. Let's get that out of the way. I'll show you here. One oh four for first light. Put it back on here. I just had to have it up on that spool piece so that you guys could see. Oh, one hundred and four degrees. Now, I hear a lot of people say that flow begins at fifty thousandths. So. We're gonna check and see where 50 thousandths hits. I'm gonna continue on till the piston comes down. And then I wanna close it. And it looks to me like we are at I'm going to call it 110. Double check. Stick the feeler gauges in. Hundred and ten. That's six degrees difference in 50 thousandths. So, check it with this 10 thousandths feeler gauge. Hundred and six. Now, I don't know how much I trust the whole first light thing because of the angle and the bent light. I don't know how much I trust the fifty thousandths thing. So I think what I'm going to do during all these builds is use a ten thousandths feeler gauge. Because I know it's straight with the top of the exhaust port over across the piston. Okay, so the next, now what I'm gonna do is check the intake timing. I will record all these numbers and I will have them in a spreadsheet. And I will also record them in a book but I will have all this information publicly accessible. But what I'm about to do now is I'm going to take this cylinder off, remove the base gasket, and record all this intake and exhaust numbers again. I also have this new aftermarket cylinder in which I'm going to put it on with a base gasket, take all of these numbers again, and then I'll take the base gasket off record all the numbers again. And that's the purpose of this video is comparison of OEM cylinders and the aftermarket cylinders and see where our numbers are. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with all that, but the data and information will be available upon completion. Here we can see the exhaust on the left side and the intake on the right. We have the numbers with and without the base gasket on this OEM cylinder. You can also see that there is quite a difference between the timing of first light versus the timing of 50 thousandths or where they say flow starts. 
I will be using the 10,000s feeler gauge for all of my builds and for everything going into the future. Now you know. Okay, so we got the stock OEM cylinder timed out at uh, with the base gasket, without the base gasket. Um, for most of these builds on the 55s, if not all of them, other than maybe a handful, I'm not going to be using a base gasket. This is the one that comes with this aftermarket cylinder. Uh, I don't know if anybody is curious as to what comes in this package. Go ahead and show you. It does not come with the pulse tube. You will have to use the one off of your OEM or you have a ring, sir clips, wrist pin, and the piston. Now, oh, and it also come with this very important piece that I had already set out. I personally will not be doing any of these builds without a compression release because the 55s that I have done thus far build so much compression that they I wouldn't want to try to start them without the release. So now I'm going to take this setup for purposes of information. I'm going to leave the stock piston in so that we can compare numbers on this one. But I'm just going to set this cylinder down with no base gasket, time it, and then the numbers will get logged into the spreadsheet. And once we have that, we'll be able to start making our decisions on the moves we want to make. But that will be all of today's video. It's just gathering information from the differences in an OEM cylinder and our aftermarket ones. Here's the comparison between an OEM and an aftermarket cylinder. As you can see, there's two degrees difference on the exhaust opening, three degrees difference on the intake opening, which is a lot considering four and six degrees in the duration on the overall. So in conclusion, we see that the aftermarket cylinder is a little bit different than the stock cylinder, the OEM cylinder. A uh, few degrees difference in timing, uh, which is going to change the duration, which is going to give us a completely different start point. Um, also, you can see that there's a big difference in first light and that 50 thousandths where flow starts. So for me, I'm going to use the 10 thousandths feeler gauge. It may be a degree or two past first light, but I know that'll be where the light is good and wide. And I know at 10 thousandths, we can create consistency. And that's what I like is consistency and a hard data start point. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. That way I can keep making what you guys want.